I'm still finding myself. That mark, bro, I've thrown things away because of marks like that. So his dad, oh, how can you not know him? It's just, if you don't know him, he's... What was it again? <laughs> I thought, you know what? Forget the Muslim scene, man. <laughs> I remember once, yeah, bro. I got these, um, I got grills, bro. We're going to do it, yeah? I'm okay. Do do. Do You got buttons. Your wife is going to know the exact formula, the code, to getting you angry. This is a personal thing, I've never told this to anyone. My wife even maybe m might not know this to the full extent, but like, bro. Everyone has secrets. Assalamu alaikum guys and welcome to this special new episode of Declassified. I've got a very special guest with me here today. His name as some of you will know, but most of you will not know, <laughs> or the other way around, we'll see, he's none other than the notorious, the magnanimous, the stupendous, stupendous. <laughs> uh, he's none other than Musa Adnan. Asalaamu Alaikum, bro. Wa Alaikum Asalaam, bro. Can you feel my hand? It's sweating. I, I, I no, it's I'm actually, actually uh, unusually dry. I don't think that intro was invasive enough. <laughs> How you doing, bro? Alhamdulillah, man. I'm, I'm doing really, really good, bro. Excited for this. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So am I. So am I. Really looking forward to this. There's going to be loads of things that we'll be discussing, inshallah. Those of you that have been following Musa Adnan for many years, even before I joined the scene properly, Musa, Ali, Hamza, these guys, they were rocking it. Hamza, I don't think can count Hamza in this, but he was still doing his thing like a chicken wing. So, uh, <laughs> so Musa has been doing the game for a very long time, but what makes his situation unique is he's been doing it whilst he was young. So he mm. literally matured on camera. Yeah, he made mistakes. On camera, he made his successes on camera, and now he disappeared. On camera, o off camera, off camera, uh, and then now he's he's back on camera. On camera. So there's a lot that's happened. We've spoken mm. um, off camera about this, and mashallah, it's it was so interesting that I had to invite him to declassified. So we could declassify, de-analyze, decrypt his story and so we can truly benefit from it because there's some wicked themes that we're going to be covering. Yeah, some like being young, social media, making your mistake, mistakes publicly. He's got a famous dad, Norman Ali Khan and Norman Ali Khan's really famous. <laughs> is it? No? My dad is not Norman Ali Khan. No? My dad is definitely not Norman Ali Khan. No, Sh no. Not Shah Rukh Khan either. Who, who, who's, who's your dad? I don't know if he's Norman Ali Khan. So his dad, oh, how can you not know him? It's just, if you don't know him, he's... What was it again? I don't know if he's... <laughs> <laughs> of course, it's none other than uh, Ustad Adnan Rashid. And it's, it's that interesting kind of... Uh, <laughs> Did I get it wrong again? I cannot believe that you just done that. That's shocking. <laughs> it's that interesting kind of relationship of as he was going through this, having a dad that's in mainstream dawa, that's doing these debates, that's mashallah, giving these lectures, and he's going through the madness that he's going through. Again, how did he deal with it? How did he feel when he was with his dad going through those experiences? And marriage. He's been married for four years now. Yeah, coming up to it, yeah. Yeah, grey hairs? Yes, actually, a few on my head. There you go, yeah, there you go. And I'm noticing the the, the, the kind of... Uh... <laughs> Bro, don't hit that, okay? <laughs> don't hit that. It's, it's very shiny, very shiny. So, in, in that regard, I really want to hear what he has to say about marriage because I've been married for like a year and already speed bumps are, 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 are coming up and I'm like, how on earth did this Bengali guy manage four years? Yeah, that's, 
It's just a mission flex. He's I'm, not I'm Bengali, f- by the I'm way. I'm from Pakistan. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Let's keep the countries out of this, bro. Yeah. Those of you that, of course, will know Musa, you know that he's been missing for quite a while. What has he been doing? Is he coming back? What's he been doing? Yeah. Again, I, I can't wait. Yeah, we're dealing with some major topics. And because it's coming from a younger man, look, young man, elastic skin. Huh? Kuchu kuchu ku and that, isn't it? Kuchu kuchu ku and that, isn't it? How on earth did you get into YouTube, bro? I got into YouTube. Um, it's like, it's, it was just like an automatic thing that just happened it just literally just happened you know so for example my dad as you mentioned you know i'd see my dad doing some public stuff you know he was with um amazingly enough the organization i now work with i era he was working for them and he was doing stuff with them he was one of their speakers and the you know dawa personalities and um I saw my dad doing these public things, these events. I've always gone with my dad to these events and stuff like that. So growing up, when I was thinking about what do I want to do kind of thing, etc. I remember one day I just came home and I just like picked up. I had like this tablet and it had like a keyboard on it. I was really chuffed to buy a broke. But anyway, I started like I recorded myself on a, on a, on a camera, uploaded it, bro. I done a video of how to do wudu. I don't know why I done that. Is yeah. that video still up? No, I deleted oh. that stuff. I was like, I got to delete that whole channel. How old were you and when did you start? I was around 15, 16, I'd say. I'm 22 now. So uh, it's a good five years I've been doing this sort of stuff. So from your times, I, I guess what three things would you say are positives from your experience on social media at such an early age? For me, bro, it was a thing where... Because you were fairly consistent. Yeah, 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 I was. I was. Yeah. Uh, for me, it was this pressure social media also puts this additional pressure on you to be on point do you get it Mm. you need to look on point you need to be on point you need to behave on point i can't be seen going into some places where other people can be seen going into you see what i mean i can't be seen doing certain things like bro even if i let's say i smoke for example, I would... Stuff for a lot, bro. Yeah. You're not smoking kills. Uh, you should stop that. <laughs> no, don't. Huh? Yeah. But let's say I used to smoke. I didn't. Stuff I've, I've, I've never... You, know, uh, you shouldn't really be bringing up your sins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I never smoked, yeah. yeah. Let's say I, 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 I done stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I was doing it in public. <laughs> this is just going somewhere else, isn't it? Yeah. Let's say I was doing it in public and I was doing all you know, all of this sort of stuff and whatnot. Bro, I can't be doing that. Yeah. Publicly, 100%. I can't be guys imagine walking down the street and seeing Smile to Jannah, Zishan, just standing on the corner <laughs> <laughs> with, a, with you know, like a like a spliff on his ear. You know how some guys have you'd be like, yo mate. You can buy some stock. <laughs> you're 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 on the path to the path to the Colombians. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, you uh, <laughs> Colombia, eh? <laughs> Colombia. There was this additional pressure, so that's one of the benefits that um, I feel, um, and I genuinely do feel that if I was not on social media and I didn't have to, for the sake of Allah, uphold this good kind of thing, because bro, when you're on social media, you have to, whether you like it or not, people mm. look up to you. Your word influences people. I'll give you an example. If 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 I just done a snap right now on mm. Snapchat, and I put a song in that, yeah, some people haven't heard that song. They're yeah. like, "Yo, this sounds really good." Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to find this song, and it happens so much, bro. Hundred people now have downloaded that song. They're listening to it. Hundred. Like, let's say if you got like a small amount of followers, only a hundred people listen to, it. bro. You're accountable. For those, hundred. for those hundred people that mm. you just like is deep people don't think about social media like this right. people think i'm just gonna post this tweet swearing or i'm just gonna mock this guy number two benefit is you're in a position where you can get anything you want to say out there very quickly okay it's you're in a position of influence you, okay. you when they say influencer you literally are an influencer bro you can influence people to smoke to do good, to not smoke. You can influence people to wear pink, to not wear pink. Sa- faded to- salmon color, bro. F- f- faded salmon color for, Sorry, the, bro. F- for the for the viewers. I like salmon though. F- faded salmon color. Yeah, you can, bro. You can influence people to do anything you want. You know, faded, you're sa- influencing. Faded salmon color. You're influencing people to uh, 
you know, get into all of this uh, waste of time. It's conspiracy facts, bro. Conspiracy facts, not theories, yeah? yeah? No, no, they're not theories anymore, bro. So we, we, we've gone beyond it. Number three, bro. Number three, I would say, is the love you feel. The love you feel, bro. <laughs> Don't turn this into something else here, bro. He's got, he's got a tendency to do that. Now, I'm talking about, like, I'll give you an example, yeah? Just the other day, um, two brothers came from Australia. Bro, this, you're talking about love and two brothers from Australia. <laughs> so, yeah, I knew, <laughs> guys, I, I knew. With him, bro, he's going to he's gonna twist it until it's broken. Uh you know, they, they, they're showing so much love, bro. They're like, we love the stuff you do, etc., etc. So we go out with them to eat, etc., all of this sort of stuff. I only spent one or two days with them, bro. And we've built such a connection. <laughs> What's wrong with you, man? We've built such a connection where it's like, they're like, bro, anytime you come to Australia, we got you. You know, they're telling me about the kangaroos. You know, you got any conspiracy theories about kangaroos? No, 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 we're good. This whole kind of now... It was going on a good path, but how comes it started wavering? What caused it to waver, and w- how did you yeah. balance that with your with your image? So, bro, you know when you when, when you start getting any any form of success, any form of success, you know, even if that be in terms of religion, like you're becoming closer to Allah, etc. You find that a lot of people they they find it hard to stay balanced. So with me, when I started getting a bit of recognition, I started getting known, I started, yo, people are recognizing me sometimes when I go out, etc. And all of this sort of stuff, and I'm getting clothes, I used to get clothes sent to me for free. At one point, I remember going out and, and, and saying to someone, everything I'm wearing on my, on, on, my, on my body is literally I got for free from people, except my underwear and my socks. <laughs> yeah, literally like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So literally, well, it was like that at times. So wh- when when you're doing that, when you're when you're so when you feel at least influential or you feel like somebody, sometimes it can get to you. And what happened with me is I went through this one specific phase where I thought, you know what? Forget the Muslim scene, man. <laughs> Did you you came, bro? <laughs> That's now, deep, bro. I was like, forget the Muslim scene, man. I want to make money, I want to be up here, I want to be known, I want to be this, I want to be that, etc. And I want to, I want to, I want to, you know, be out here. Do you get it? Like, out here. Out here, bro. I just started making different videos. You start not saying salam in your videos. Hey guys, da 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 da. You're trying to, you're trying to be like these other YouTubers who have transitioned into this thing. And you want to be like that. Mainstream, yeah. yeah. the mainstream. You want to have, like, all of these lights on you. You want to be on, you know, you, you dream, bro. Like, you want to be on Ellen or something like that. Like, and you, you start imagining it. Mm. And it's Fantasizing about fant- it. Yeah. And you know what it is, bro? It's, it's, it's a lack of reality. It's, it's, you get lost in your mind. You see? So, with me, that happened. I started doing all of this stuff. I started, I remember I done a post saying, I'm not in the Dao scene. Whoa. Don't class me in the Dao scene, wow. etc. So like for me, bro, I, I, I started getting lost, Akhi. Mm. And yeah, man, that that's one of the phases I went through. I remember once, yeah, bro, I got these, um, I got grills, bro. I was with MB actually, Muslim Bilal. We went to Germany. I had grills, bro. I don't know what MB must have been thinking. Didn't you say anything? <laughs> no, he was just like calm about it. But oh, see, that's how brothers like that yeah. got a lot of wisdom, bro. He probably thought Moose is just a kid because. Moose is just a kid, you know, he's growing up, he's finding himself kind of thing. We all went through it, kind of thing. What made me feel like... What appealed to you? Inclined from, to that. Yeah. Bro, society, as I was saying, I'm a student of history and you learn how... You learn how society and government and the people governing influence the masses. Do you get it? Influence the masses. Yeah. And I feel... I don't feel like, bro, you can take drugs and... There's, you know there's some things bro that are haram yeah. in Islam and these are things bro you'll notice they have a long term long term psychological effect on you bro things like drugs things things like alcohol bro things like even bro physical haram things you can do whether that be masturbation pornography zina you know, committing zina, ad- adultery with rant, loads and loads of different women. I'll give you an example, yeah? People who I know, really like, you know how they say, been around, you know, in their past, you know, they're practicing now, mashallah. I've seen that even to that extent, they've done a big sin, and they've done it so many times, it's affecting them now. Five years later, 
in their marriage, they look at their wife, they say, bro, I've forgotten what my ex-girlfriend's name was, but I'm randomly in the shower and pictures are coming to my head. I'm comparing her to my wife. All of these things. Mm. And he's like, Ahi, I wish I could be like you. I wish I never done nothing except when I got married. Yeah. Because now, those sins that I committed back in the day, the weed, the drugs, the, the, the fornication with so many different girls, it's affected me, bro, even till now. Where psychologically, mm. it's had a long-term effect on me. Mad. And you know what comes to my mind, bro? Allah made these things haram, prohibited. Haram, there's one thing, haram. There's makruh, disliked. Some things are just disliked. By who? By Allah and His Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa Yeah? But some things are prohibited. Don't go near to these things. Allah says, not, don't commit zina. Don't go near it. Mm. But, because you were on social media when you were young, mm. bro, you were making mistakes online and Topics. you were getting criticized mm. online. Mm. Yeah. What were the challenges that came with that? And how did it affect you? And how does it affect you? My dad, as you mentioned, is a public person. When I was making these mistakes, one of the things I love so much about my dad and I respect about bro, him I now, love Norman Khan as well, you know. He's just, <laughs> bro, you bro, are he's like a wicked dog, bro. Bro, yeah, he's, bro, he's brought the Quran <laughs> into the mainstream, bro. bro. Bro, can you get him on the podcast? Bro, I don't know him. <laughs> But well, sometimes I felt like that with my parents as well. So I, I, I get you, bro. I get you, bro. But, but yeah, go. <laughs> but then you know how to respond to that. <laughs> yeah, he, he. You know what he done, bro? He gave me the freedom, and even brothers around me. You know, even like for example, the brother Abu Bakr Islam. Um, he's someone who I will, I saw from a young age, and people like that, Muslim Bilal, etc. People that were older than me, even some shiyukh and you, older than me. But they're not in my DMs or they're not in my WhatsApp mm. giving me long voice notes saying, Ack, you got to stop this, bro, don't do this, da, 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 you're harming yourself. They, they were like, chill, Let's, he'll come around. He'll come around. He's going to learn the hard way. He'll learn. Mm. They let me learn. My dad let me learn. My dad saw me making mistakes. He let me learn. Subhanallah, so profound, bro. Yeah. And bro, profound. eventually, eventually what happened is I learned myself. So with me, public mistakes, bro, with a lot of people in public, they blast you. Why are you doing this for, etc., etc. And bro, it actually makes things harder for you. How did you deal with the hate, with messages and stuff, bro? Bro, it's like in a very aggressive way. You know, I became very aggressive with people and stuff like that, and it made me kind of build up this resentment as well, like this thing where you know, and and it can happen. I've seen it happen with dawah figures, bro. Where now. And, and you have to be balanced, Dahi. Because sometimes, bro, what happens is when so many people have hated on you, bro, and you get a comment saying, Akhil Kareem, may Allah bless you, bro. You know, I don't really think you should have done that, man. You get a message saying, you're like, Akhi, don't tell me that. I don't want to hear that from you. Look at you, bro. Look at yourself. Look, look in the mirror. Da, da, da. Because you've had so much hate. Now when you get a good piece of advice, you just see that as hate as well. Mm. So you've got to be balanced, bro. With me... It was a thing where, bro, the way I would deal with it is, I remember I said this in a halal dining a long time ago. I used, to, I used to think to myself, you know, anything good that comes from the public, jazakallah khairan. Anything bad that comes from the public, jazakallah khairan. Take all of it with a pinch of salt. Take all of it. Don't even fil filter it. I used to think like this. Don't even filter it. Take it all with a pinch of salt. You're telling me something good? No problem. You don't know my reality. You're telling me something bad? No problem. You don't know my reality. Mm. Like that So you were very closed you off see, I was closed off I would close off Yeah I think a lot of people do this That helped you survive Yeah Yeah that helped me survive But recently I've become more open So if someone messages me And says And and it's your approach It's your manner If someone messages me I remember once Once Akhi, In all of my years On social media I only remember one message One I remember one And it was a sister And she said to me Assalamu alaikum Rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Bro Da, 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 da. I know you're doing your thing, etc. You know, you, 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 you're doing all of this. May Allah bless you, etc. I just thought maybe you could do this. And bro, I remember mm. how hard that advice hit me. Mm. And I was like, I actually like remember, because I got this tendency, like I'll voice note someone back. Because now on Instagram and Snapchat, you can voice, voice note. Like, you know what? Thank you so much for that message. Because oh. that... What the, <laughs> Honestly, bro, bro. Don't take it somewhere else. But I was like, bro, uh, sis, yeah, 
The way you said that, bro, sis, like it's a bit it's of both, yeah. <laughs> but I wouldn't get one for me. <laughs> bro, it's, you know, it, you you know, know what? Mad, it's, it's actually mad. The reason why I said profound is because, bro, that that sounds like a advice of a woman and not the advice of a girl. A woman is uh, that yeah. you, you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah, that's yeah. experience speaking, bro. How to approach someone. A lot of marriages break because the woman can't speak to the man, the man can't speak to the woman because they don't understand each other. Let me give you an example. Yeah. I met a brother actually. He got piercings all over the place. Piercing and he's a brother I used to know. I still know him. Good brother man, got a very good heart, mashallah. Like he's inclined towards good. May Allah protect him and guide him. I mean this uh, brother actually piercing on his tongue. And obviously where we come from, that's a little bit, you know. Excessive, yeah. Excessive, you know, to say the least, yeah. Um, piercings on his arm, piercing, like all over the place, like he just piercings. Yeah, it's mad. Yeah? Imagine having biryani and it stings each time. Oh, don't even, bro. it hurts my tongue. You know some things oh. when you think about it, you're like, mm, I don't want to do that. You, yeah. It's going to hurt me, yeah. But anyway, I went out with this brother one day. And I was just, uh, don't make it something. <laughs> yeah, I'm just scared <laughs> with this guy. He's going to, I went out with this brother, yeah. And actually... But you made it yourself. I just, I just had a chat yeah. with him, bro. Yeah, I just, I'm just gonna ignore you now, bro. Yeah, I had a chat yeah. with him. Yeah, and I was like, you know, just, just talking to him about myself. Just getting to know him. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Sorry, guys. Sorry. I know you're probably, probably trying to get into it. It's my fault. It's my fault. Go, go, go. Yeah, yeah. So me, I was. Uh, I was speaking to him I was, and yeah. I wasn't giving him like direct advice, bro. Mm. He got home and you know what he said to me? He goes, bro, thank you so much. And bro, by the way, this guy's probably had DMs of hate. He's in the public a little bit. Mm. DMs of hate, uh, people criticizing him, brothers probably talking crap behind him, behind his back. Look at this guy. Uh, you know, the kind of things people might say is, oh, he's moving gay. He's moving homosexual. Mm. He's doing so, these sort of, they were talking about, about him in like a really low way kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. Um, and bro, it's like with me, when I spoke to him, I didn't make him feel like that, intentionally. Mm. Bro, by the way, I'm not trying to toot my own horn here, bro. I went yeah. through years of judging people and smack down, boom, you get it. And then myself, someone will, was, I needed to smack down. But, but you learned from that and you I learned from that and I grew. And the way I advised him, bro, he got home and he goes to me, bro, I've taken some of my piercings off. And, and I, I didn't think I'd do this, but like your conversation hit me so hard. Mm. Like, and bro, his family talked to him. His his everyone talks to him. By the way, uh, important thing I didn't mention. I hardly know this brother. People normally talk at someone. Oh, you need to do this. There's no interaction there. Like, how how do you feel? Bro? You know, the, like pro the, yeah. the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He had this thing with people where he had such good tarbiyah. When he would talk to you, he would make you feel like you're the most beloved person to him. And mm. and that touches people, bro. That that you 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 meet someone, you shake their hand with their right, with their left, you've taken their heart. Ah, oh. that's how you wanna be, bro. Mosaira, <laughs> You mentioned other phases that you had as well. I remember one phase that you went through. It was it was very materialistic. Oh um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let, let, let's talk about that phase and how you tried to find comfort and meaning in material things. Hoping that would fill a void. What was that void and why did you turn to materialism and how did you come out of that? We have a dua. Um, I mean, <laughs> we have a dua that expresses about, you know, clothes. When you see someone wearing nice clothes, you make dua for their clothes. And what do you say? You make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when, when these clothes wear out, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replaces them as well. Mm. You know why that dua really resonated with me, bro? When I was going through this materialistic phase, spending 300 pounds on a belt, 300 pounds on jackets, hundreds of pounds on this, jeans, watches, um, you know, tr getting these bracelets and stuff like that, etc. Yeah, just nah. pass me the one <laughs> Don't put it on me, bro. I don't want to say Nah, I never had one like that, bro. No, not like this? No. Nah. Proper 90 style, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, but like having this sort of stuff And bro, you know what would happen to me, yeah? If I had something And they got a little scratch on it Like I can see here It's got a little scratch on it, yeah? Bro It would depress me, yaki mm. This is a personal thing I've never told this to anyone My wife even maybe m Might not know this to the full extent But like, bro Depress me, bro 
I think, oh man. And then I would always look forward, oh yeah, yeah when I get more money, I'm gonna get something in it. I would look for perfection in materials. If I would buy a jacket and it's got a little thread sticking, I'd be like, man, these guys took the mick, man. Why? Like, Why? Bro, I became really like attached to these things where I'd be like, that's I think how they I, were an extension of you. Yeah, this is how I would define myself. Bro, I want to be on point when I go out. I don't even want to have a speck. And bro, it became, it, it turned into OCD. Mm. And that turned into overthinking. So overthinking about everything. Yo, this, that one. I, don't, I need to make sure I this. this it, like this, for example. Yeah. But for example, yeah, look here. This, this is like, I don't know what happened. Yeah. This has got a little mark here. It's a white throw. I watched it last night, but it's got yeah. a little mark here now. Bro, back in the day, actually, that mark. Bro, I've thrown things away because of marks like that. Wow. This is a little, you, you can't even see it, bro. Little one mark. Yeah. I've thrown things away because of that. Mad. Because I've I've I became so materialistic, yeah, so materialistic. Sorry. Oh yeah, Rah. Okay, can I pay away? Sorry, my hands got a bit excited. Yeah. I became so materialistic where I was like, my things all need to be perfect, and I was searching Jannah in the dunya. I was searching for Jannah in the dunya, searching for the satisfaction in the dunya, and I was trying to find perfection in things that are going to be imperfect. So you will never, never reach true happiness, true contentment with these things. And that's what I was in. I kept having to get new things. And I'm thinking, why can't I inside myself feel happy? Because I'm feeling this void. My heart's rejecting it. It's going in. My heart's rejecting it. Even when I realized that... Um, this stuff is bad. I can't find contentment in these things. I'm never going to truly be happy. I'm always going to feel voids and then have to fill them again. Feel voids, have to fill them with fake stuff. So what I started doing is I started thinking to myself and I started hoarding jackets because I like the way they look and stuff. And then I thought to myself, why am I hoarding for? Like, I don't, I haven't worn this jacket in two years, just taking up space, etc. Let me give it to charity. So, bro, eventually I kept giving, kept giving, kept giving, kept giving to charity, kept giving to charity, etc. Alhamdulillah. And then now, eventually, I came to a stage where if you came, if you saw my wardrobe, bro, I got a few thobes, I got one tracksuit, I got maybe four jumpers. Yeah, even this, it's not fully minim minimalistic, but yeah. compared to others, bro, yeah. like I, I went from being a stage, actually, I had f like 40 pairs of shoes, no exaggeration, I won on one time. Like 40 pairs of shoes I had. Wow. Yeah, I would spend every time I'd spare money, it's going on these things. If you if you go in your wardrobe, I'm speaking to people who are watching us right now. You go in your wardrobe right now, pick up things that you have. When was the last time you used that thing? Me, I'd look at that and I'd look at it literally like this, like, hmm, is that doing anything for me? Why is that there for on the table? You know what, get rid of it. Mm. It's not doing nothing for me. Mm. Do you get it? So now, bro, there's this thing, Akhi. Everything I have means something to me. Akhi, at the end of the day, the difference between us and the difference between Bill Gates is... Billions of dollars. No, but what does that mean, Akhi? What, his, his house is a little bit bigger? His, what, 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 we still eat food. We still go toilet. We, st we, we, we still wear clothes, alhamdulillah. You know? Yeah, but it, he gets to clean his bum with, with the silk. Rather than recycle tissue paper. Well, I still clean myself. Yeah, but he probably like, gets a maid to do it. Bro, when you cru when you come down to the crux, Ahi, we're all doing the same thing. Billionaire, trillionaire, millionaire, you got five pounds nah, in your account. Not necessarily, bro. He's got a maid cleaning his backside. Well, he probably doesn't even do it because he just changes his underpants every day. You know, that's what Justin Bieber said. He gets so many Calvin Klein. Yeah, he wears one. Yeah, he just wears it and chucks yeah. it away, bro. He's got skid mark. I uh, forget that. Just <laughs> it. The w no stinge or nothing. Guys, we are so materialistic, man. We need to really think about our life. We need to stop being so materialistic and, and really realize. Ahi. I believe if the Prophet wasallam was alive today, he'd be a minimalist. Of course. He he would he was not. A minimalist he would in his not own have time. ten sofas in his house. He would not mm. have his fridge full to the brim. Ah, my fridge now. Ah, alhamdulillah, bro. Now my fridge, I have what I need. I get. I'm so conscious, bro. When I go and buy milk, I used to buy the big bowl. I'm not. Like, do do yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bro, now. Once again, the do do. Bro, after a week, it expires. I have to throw out half the bowl. Yeah, so now yeah. I just get a little bottle Organic milk bro, yeah. Organic milk uh, yeah. Organic when I, did do yeah. When I can <laughs> Did do Did do pee now I think the, the next step um, th This is a step that is I, I think very remarkable You got married at what age? 19 
19 mm. and you've been married for four years coming up, i'm 22 now so um actually i got married at 18 what am i talking about i got married at 18 and then i turned 19 when i was married so i it's been it's been three years it's coming up to four years and a, l- a lot of people bro especially young it's very difficult because you're still finding yourself mm-hmm, mm-hmm, you mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. still haven't kind of put, you're still kind of confused there's still questions being answered mm-hmm. you're asking questions to be in a relationship that requires you to be somewhat mature when you don't feel mature how on earth and where on earth do you start three years of marriage bro taught me a lot of things it taught me a lot about myself you know a lot of young people want to rush to get married but they don't realize that there's a lot of things that consist of marriage, bro. So, for example, now, let's say, okay, let's talk about financially very quickly. Let's say you make fifteen hundred pounds a month. Now hey, you knit. <laughs> now you gotta. Now you gotta look after your wife. You're married. So let's say you give your wife three hundred pounds a month. I don't believe someone can live on three hundred pounds a month uh, in in London easily. I believe you got to kind of squeeze a bit. You can do it, but you got to squeeze. Yeah. So if you go out with your friends, you know, you got to kind of look at your friend like. Go on, bro. You got me. <laughs> Kev. So you know what I mean, yeah. Yeah. So let's say three hundred pound goes to your wife. You're left with twelve hundred pound. Let's say you now your house. Many of our houses growing up became overcrowded, you know, etc. So now, you you live in an overcrowded house. You can't. It's ape. Like as they say in Arabic, like it's, it's strange. Like it's weird. It's wrong. Like you can't be, you know, sleeping. You know. In a house And your brother's next door And your brother's opposite you And stuff like that It's a bit weird isn't it Yeah mm. So you want to get your own place now So you got to pay Minimum Minimum Like this is if you get An amazing deal £800 a month So now All of a sudden £1,000 gone out of your account My brother You got £500 You got to eat You got to You got to feed your wife You got to feed yourself You got to I didn't mention your mum Your mum she needs a little bit of the help as well. You should be helping your parents. You give your mum one or two hundred pounds a month. You're left with three hundred pounds. What are you gonna do with that? What are you gonna do with what's three hundred pounds? Actually, I know people they pay two hundred fifty, two hundred sixty pounds a month on TFL. Mm. Direct debit, TFL. That's that's their travel card every month. Yeah. So now what? You're left with forty pounds. So people need to realize marriage is not a joke. It's not. Oh yeah, I'm gonna get married and I'm gonna. Do all of the things I've ever fantasized about. Yeah, that's so you talk about money. Parents focus on money anyway. That's one of the reasons no, they don't want to get and kids they, married. They're not. They're not entirely wrong to worry yeah. about money. They're not entirely wrong. They don't want their daughter at the end of the day. Like, like my dad said something to me. I don't want to wipe your backside and I have to look after your wife as well. Yeah. And a lot of your parents don't let you get married because you haven't shown them you're ready. You still go and pull your tr- brother's trousers down, muck around, <laughs> like, like no, you know what I mean. Like poke your sister. You like you're behaving like a like a fool with your mum. You're not. You you can't even go and get like a bottle of milk for your mum. You're rude to your mum. You're not showing maturity financially, physically, emotionally. You haven't got emotional intelligence. You just you're just a little. You just. A Where little, did you get all of that from? So with me, Achi. I wanted to get married from 16. My dad was like, listen, 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 listen. He told me all of this. He goes, sort yourself out financially. Get a bit more mature. No problem, get married. Okay. So it took me years to do that, isn't it? Because a 16 year old is not going to be making good money. Yeah. And, and so you made the intention at 16 to I start doing that. Start okay. doing that. So I started getting ready, preparing, 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 preparing. How? Yeah. Um, you Books, lectures, scholars I didn't I'll be very honest though mm. I, I didn't think Oh I'm doing this To prepare for marriage Okay Yeah what I, what, what I feel like With me alhamdulillah It happened But what I would advise people to do Is you find yourself You know how you find mm. yourself See how you are When you get angry See how you are With your mother Okay You know a lot of people For example they come And they say My mum pees me off my dad pees me off. But these people, you know, excuse the you know language, but these people really get me upset and they get me angry. Mm. My brother, woo-hoo-hoo. when you get married, your wife is gonna know. You you got a system. Let's say you got a system. You got a system. You got buttons. Your wife is gonna know the exact formula, the code, to getting you angry. Mm. And you're gonna know the code to getting her angry. You're mm. gonna know each other's insecurities. You're gonna know each other's low times. You're gonna know that her dad done this to her when she was younger. You know her dad would beat her or something like that. You're gonna use that against her. She's gonna know that your mom was on council tax or something like that. She's gonna use that against you in an argument. Mm. Yeah, your mom just be living on this. Like, all of Mad. this sort of stuff, bro. Flipping, eh? Like, bro, emotionally, marriage, uh, physically, 
You know, people get married to satisfy physical desires. Yeah. That's the easiest thing, my brother. Yeah. That's the easiest thing. Like, it's easy to just, you know, I'm, I'm going to be a little bit blunt here. Not yeah. even that's quite difficult, bro. <laughs> Don't talk to me about that, please. Yeah. No, I'm joking. No, okay, some people yeah. might find that difficult, yeah? It's easy to just do, do acts. Do an act, yeah. Do an act, you know? But when things challenge you emotionally, mm. You know, things challenge you financially. Things challenge you in terms of your dean. You know, what are you going to do, for example, your wife saying, I want to wear this dress. You're not wearing that. Now Ooh. what? Now what? Especially in this day and age, bro, with the rise of feminism. Yeah. But yeah, you got you have to be mature. Be mature, you know. Um, I was speaking to someone who was telling me I want to get married. You know what? The, you know what this person said to me? I I only want to marry this person if if I if my parents don't let me marry this person I'm not getting married. I said, you know for you know for what you just said, mm. for what you just said, you are so immature and you are not you, you, that you're person. Not you've just showed me you're not ready to get married mm. because you you're just being emotional now. Yeah, you're just being emotional. You know when people act like, bro, this is the one. She's gonna. Da, 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 da. There's a bit of naivety to that as well mm. because at the end of the day, bro. Um, we as people, we can get on with, you know, it depends what type of character is, yeah, true. But generally, Akhi, as people, you know, my mum my really, you know, my mum said something to me that's really powerful, bro. She said to me, what is marriage? But a friendship, a friendship, except you do, you, you, you also have intimacy. Yeah. That's yeah. it. That's the right way to say it. A friendship with intimacy. That's what marriage is. Mm. And And with your friends, you're going to have arguments, you're going to have, Differings, you're gonna, you might have a fight, you might, boy, throw something at your friend, etc. Your wife might throw something at you, you may throw throw something at your wife, etc. Like, and this is so important, actually. I've met brothers, yeah. I'm like, bro, don't swear at your wife, man. But she's a bro. mother, she's a flipper. <laughs> but then, no, but you know, the brother he has to flip off, bro. But you know, the brother, <laughs> bro, are you okay? I'm just flipping going Flipped through, bro going through something I'm just flipped <laughs> Everyone needs to flip off <laughs> But it's like bro This brother was like No but bro Swearing is normal It's a practicing yeah. brother bro yeah. I'm like Bro You know when you set your standards so high Look, uh, Let me give you an example now the Standard in my house is you don't swear What have I done there? If you're not allowed to swear Are you allowed to hit? If you're not allowed to swear Are you allowed to like Be abusive and use emotional blackmail and stuff No Hmm I've said, unfortunately, people find it as a norm nowadays that swearing in a marriage. I've said it like, me and my wife, oh, hey, don't swear. Yeah. yeah. And I don't swear as well. You, flipper, yeah? you better not flip and swear. So, bro, the worst thing you say to your wife, or the worst thing, the worst thing that my wife could ever do to me now, show me a little bit of attitude. But what techniques did you follow? Okay. What did you do that helped facilitate your don't, journey? Don't stretch problems. Don't stretch problems. Sometimes men and women do this. They stretch a problem to prove a point. I'm not talking to you for a week because I want you to know. No, 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 no that's all dead. You don't need to do that. Don't play emotional games. Do you get it? Yeah. So, of course, you know, there's certain things, there's things that we take, etc. But don't stretch problems when you can fix them. That's what I mean. You know, sometimes you need to take a break from each other. And and that's not stretching a problem. That's sorting a problem out. Mm. But sometimes, bro, you're like, no, I'm not going to forgive her. Bro, forgive her. I've been in situations like this, like helping people with their marriage. Bro, forgive her. No, 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 I'm not going to forgive her. She needs to know. Bro, she knows. She's apologized. Forgive her. Do you get it? It's like that. So for me, me and my wife, actually... It's rare for a, for a problem because everyone has problems now. Um, it's rare for a problem with us to last long. Ashallah. You know, may Allah like, 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 preserve you. Like, I mean, there's I mean, a lot likewise. of these evil eyes out there, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's but like, a very uh, beautiful trait to have nowadays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't don't stretch problems. If you have an argument, um, bro, I'm, uh, I'm I'm not saying it to toot my own horn, Akhi, but like me and my wife, we've had we've had an argument. Five minutes later, we'll, we're we're fine. We're all cuddled up. Mm. And, and 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 because you need to actually in, in in does she know about the two Australian dudes? <laughs> Bro, what's wrong? <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, you've been off YouTube for quite a while. 
you're defining yourself you're mm. not currently with Aira yeah but uh, again just just elaborate on where you are now yeah because you you're studying as well I think that's quite an inspiration because of the it's gap important. you've had yeah it's and then you've, you've come back so yeah. where are you now and where what, what are your plans I'm still finding myself and I think everyone has this is the beautiful thing about Islam as you progress what's a low stage to me maybe your norm mm. what's a high stage to you maybe like unrealistic for me mm. do you get it and what's a low stage for you maybe like my goal you mm. know so we're all relative we're all going through things for example Zishan bro it seems like you read a lot for me reading a lot is like if I read an hour a day that's amazing for someone else they're like the hell are you talking about I read three hours a day you see so it's different but um for me, the stage I'm at now, I consider myself, I need to, I could work so much harder. But um, I'm with Ayra, alhamdulillah. I'm at university, I've said this before, I'm doing history. Very beautiful topic, very interesting, beneficial topic, alhamdulillah. And um, my journey, I'm just still on my journey and I'm just trying to develop myself every day. You know, as one of my close friends, I spoke to him the other day over voice notes on WhatsApp. He said to me, um, bro, as long as you're progressing, Mm. You know, another one actually was another Asha, one of my friends. That's beautiful. He said, "As long as you're progressing, just keep progressing. Mm. You know, d- don't don't regress. Yeah, you know, as Allah says so in um, Surah Mudathir, 'Liman shaa min kum ayya taqaddama awya taakhir.' You know, um, and there's a thing where in generally there's no such thing as like being in the same place. You're either going forward or you're going backwards. Do you mm. know why, bro? Because some people they say same old, same old. You're not same old. You're 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 backwards now, because you've wasted. Yeah. You've wasted time. Mm. You're never gonna get that time back. So you've gone backwards. If time was infinite, then you're same old. Mm. But because you're losing time, you're not same old. You're either going forward or you're going backwards. Just make sure you're going forwards. Smart. That's what I would say. Just make sure you're going forwards. Don't go back. You know you got a problem. Like for example. Um, don't don't go into the same problem as yesterday. What's the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu He expressed to us that the believer, the Muslim, the one who has Islam, is not the one who keeps falling into the same mistakes. He doesn't fall into the same mistake twice. He makes one mistake, but what's he done? He's progressed now. Mm. He's not going to do that again. He's learned. Okay, you know what? I fell into that hole. I got bitten. It really hurt. I'm not going to fall into that one. That's it, bro. Just keep progressing. So with me, yeah, man. If you want to keep up to what, with what I'm doing. Instagram um, at Musa Adnan, Snapchat Musa lives because I'm living right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> YouTube, bro, Are you coming back? I'm coming back, inshallah. I'm coming back, but um, I need to do a bit of work and then come back. Yeah, definitely. That's very, because I think we were speaking as well. You, you're still kind of developing yourself. I'm developing, bro. It's it's important. You know, you know. Quickly going back to one of the things we discussed, actually. The reason why I'm a bit, I'm not in a rush to come back to YouTube is because, bro, I made so many public mistakes. What if mm. I come back and I make more? Yeah. Do you get it? Like, I want to be, I want to be like, you know, there's certain things I've done, that aren't even, some people will say they're not even haram, but I regret them. Mm. You know, there's a lot of things, actually, the majority of the things I regret are not haram. You know that? You, 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 like bro, no, I didn't know you, when, when we're talking about mistakes, yeah. bro, I, I'm not talking about haram. I'm talking about things I done. I wish I, I didn't do it like that. It's not haram. It's not prohibited. But bro, bro, some people, subhanallah, their past is haram. Yeah, they made haram public mistakes. That's even worse, bro. Like so, so you need to be careful. So because I've made so many errors in public, I have to be careful now. I have to be careful, etc. You know, in the future, I want to teach, I want to benefit people. If I want to do that, I can't be someone where, you know, people Google my name. <laughs> they look, what the hell is this? All right, guys, we'll, uh, we'll leave it there. Hope it's been good, man. Yeah, bro, definitely. I think we, we touched upon many vital topics. I tried to delve into it and, you know, Jazakallah for opening up. Nah, and, no problem, bro. And, and, and giving us this and we wish you all the best on your journey, bro. And uh, may Allah, like you know, as, assist us both Ameen. and um, get us to our destination mm. um, and make us such that he becomes pleased with us. Until next time, bro. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as-salam. Assalamu alaikum. Faded salmon color.